right. I think we've got everyone that has responded and if other people joined, that is great. So welcome to our first webinar. The Borkter Center has never done something like this before. So these are unprecedented times, but thank you so much for being here. We hope this is a great time for you to get your questions answered. Um, and we really want this to be a conversation. So please know that if you have a question, if um, something seems silly, please ask it. We wanna answer it. Um, a couple of Borkter staff that are on the call that'll be kind of leading our conversation today is myself, Megan Schultz. I deal with networking um, and job shadowing in our office. Dale Austin will be taking a big lead in our presentation today. He works with pretty much everything, but um, our expert on job search, interview preparation, grad school, you name it, he's been doing this a while. Um, he'll be have great answers to your questions. Um, Casey Petro, We'll also be on the call and she's going to walk us through handshake towards the end um, of our webinar today. And then Jenna Gasworth will be in the wings uh, for any internship questions that we have. So just a full um, review of just some etiquette for our webinar um, for bandwidth. If you'd like to turn your camera off, you are welcome to do that. Um, if you just want to keep it on, that is fine. Uh, but we ask that you mute your mic um, so we don't get any feedback as well. Um, but let's go ahead and check out the chat feature. So in your top right hand corner of your screen, you should see a little speech bubble. And we would love to know why, why you are here today. So if you just want to drop us a note in that chat, if you just want to describe what brings you here, maybe a question that you have, concern, uh, we would love to start with your questions. So go ahead, um, drop those into the chat, and we will get started. And again, if you're just joining us, make sure that you're dropping why, what brings you here to our webinar today. Did something stand out for you in the description? Is there a burning question on your mind? Do you have internship related questions? What topic would you like to hear most from us today? Okay, our first one from Megan um, is around summer internships. So many of the ones that she's applied for or has accepted have been terminated. Um, Megan, we will be answering that question as far as some internship and job search steps. Um, but I don't know, Jenna, if you have any um, first words of wisdom you'd like to kick us off around that topic. Lost my camera there for a moment. Hi, Megan, good to see you on the call today. I know that you've we've been working together and uh, applying for a lot of different opportunities. I'm so sorry to hear that uh, some of the opportunities that you have been applying for haven't been working out. Um, and we are, oh, I'm seeing more comments come in. We are, our team is meeting weekly still to um, convene and see employers that are still hiring and new opportunities that are out there. And we are, um, handling quite a few new openings in Handshake on a daily basis. Um, so we're still approving a lot in there. So my quick answer right now is continue looking in Handshake um, and maybe we can touch base also um, after this or offline about specifics for you. Sound good? Awesome, thanks Jenna. Um, Dale, our next question is around grad school. So Jacob, who has to leave very soon, I hear I hear your comment here, um, is interested in graduate school for chemistry. Any advice on getting started, um, especially with the search process? Yes, great question, Jacob. Thanks for raising it. I'm assuming you are a sophomore. Uh, I'm sorry, a junior, not a senior, uh, looking at trying to get in next fall. So I think uh, step one, would be good, good. So step one really would be to look at what area within chemistry you're thinking about, uh, whether it's organic, physical, inorganic, uh, but trying to begin defining what that might be. And then second, connecting uh, virtually at this point with appropriate faculty in the chemistry department, uh, talking to them about uh, specific schools they might recommend. There's also a very good website that has print resources in our career library that are not available now to us, but online. You can go to petersons.com 
And that's a very good online resource for information about graduate programs, typically application deadlines, et cetera. And then I'm also going to share with you on our chat feature, as well as I will share with you, uh, if you'd like to sit down and chit chat about this separately, uh, some key planning steps. But on our website, we have uh, key graduate school planning steps that I'm going to post on the chat feature so that you have access to that. And um, you can access that. That provides a good resource to begin the planning process. Uh, also, you'll want to begin thinking about going to the GRE.org website and looking at dates for the GRE. Uh, typically, the GRE general is administered um, through a Kaplan Learning Center. There's one in Grand Rapids. Uh, so you also want to see if the schools to which you're thinking will require the uh, GRE um, subject test in chemistry. Many of them do. Uh, and then look at your timetables. Uh, but uh, I would say the best thing over beyond that brief overview is for us to uh, connect uh, with an appointment. You can set it up in Handshake. I'd love to sit down with you the next week and plan out, plan out a plan. So thanks for raising the question. Great, thanks, Dale. Um, our next two uh, questions that were submitted are kind of around um, COVID. So uh, one of the comments was, you know, I have accepted a position. Um, should I reach out to that employer about next steps? I'm assuming no, no news is good news. And then the other one is um, Monica, who's a senior who is uh, still looking for a job and uh, next steps as far as uh, that search is concerned given our current situation. Okay, good. Uh, so related to your first question, uh, I would recommend uh, that your that Kayla reach out to U of M and just indicate that she's looking forward to beginning and that uh, given what's going on with COVID-19, you thought it would make sense to initiate connection and see if there are any other steps uh, that you should be, that you as a candidate and new employees should be considering uh, before beginning. Uh, some employers are having people start virtually. I spoke with a student today where the employers reach out to them and they're starting their work on time, but virtually. So I think it's great to reach out. Um, and, you know, and if there are changes, you want to know about those ahead of time. So great question. Monica, a great question. As I recall, I think you're a psychology major from the Chicago area. Um, we met, I think, last December, and um, sure, you're welcome, Kayla. Um, I think we met uh, last December to talk about job search. Uh, so what I would do is uh, really definitely uh, continue your search. Uh, one of the things we talked about is networking, and I believe you've met with uh, Megan to talk about networking. Uh, we're going to talk later about a Hope College Connection, a great way to look at contacts in the Chicago area, in the area that you might be interested in pursuing. And then it wouldn't be a bad idea since it's been a number of months since you and I have connected to just let's sit down again through Handshake. We'll do it through this type of virtual medium and we can talk about what you've done so far, what's worked, what's not, and come up with more ideas so that you have a sense of confidence going forward. Great. And the last question we'll take for right now, we'll leave some time at the end for additional questions as you think of them, um, is from uh, Abby Willa, and she's currently a junior planning on studying abroad this fall and will be out of town during this summer. Um, she's been looking at some grad school options and would like to know steps that she could be taking uh, now to make that process a little bit smoother. A great question. And um, I would say uh, reach out to faculty, as I had suggested to Jacob earlier. Uh, I would reach out to specific faculty that uh, are in the disciplines that you're considering pursuing. I would look at the GRE org, GRE.org website to see what updates and information is going on in terms of administration and planning, because just about everything in our sphere of society in our societal sphere has been affected by COVID-19. So I think checking that, 
would make sense. I think also uh, setting up a handshake appointment for grad school planning with me over the next week or so, and we can sit down and look at other resources. I put up a resource on our uh, website on grad school planning, um, but I think it's good to have maybe uh, four to five steps that maybe you could take before you go abroad. Uh, and we're also open over the summer. So even though you're not going abroad until fall, we'll be here through the spring and summer and available for answering questions and connecting uh, through this platform. Great. So um, students, if you have additional questions, we are happy to answer those. Feel free to drop them in the chat as we continue on in our discussion. Uh, what you can kind of anticipate for the remainder of our time is I'm going to hand it over to Dale here shortly to just provide some really good steps and advice, things that we're hearing, concerns that we're, we want to address. Uh, then we'll turn it back over to me. I would love to walk you through our Hope College Connection platform so you can start getting connected with alumni. We'll finish out with any additional questions as well as Casey Petro, um, who will go over Handshake. So if you haven't been in there um, in a while or using it to its full capabilities, we're gonna walk you through some key tips there as well. So no questions, a dumb question, drop them in our chat and we'll make sure we get those answered before the end of our time. So with that, I will hand it over to Dale. Great, well, thank you, Megan. And, and thank you for all your great facilitation of this process. Uh, you know, as we think about transitioning from college to work or even grad school, there are some core planning steps that I think we want to keep in mind. And one of them uh, related to the work process is really beginning to define what type or types of work we want to pursue. It's difficult to know what you're going after if you haven't defined it. And we have marvelous staff and Borichter to really sit down with you virtually and give you ideas, resources, answer your questions, just to help get clarification around that big question. You know, what am I going to do and how do I figure it out? Uh, we've got Amy Freehafer and we have Yoli Vega, great resources to help you with that process. So that would be key. You also have a great online library called Vault, like a bank vault which is accessible through Handshake under the resources section of your profile. Uh, it has over 250 books on career topics that you can download free to your PC and dozens of video on options uh, with your background. So a great resource and it's free and available to you. Uh, so that first step is what am I gonna do? The second step is really getting your support materials ready. The core ones, of course, are cover letter resumes that we stand by ready to help you with. There are also great guides on our website that you can easily access. Uh, one of our staff will put that up on the chat feature so that you can access that uh, at any point. Uh, so that's a, a second key tool. And if you're looking at writing careers or anything in that vein, you'll wanna also look at developing an online portfolio. If you're looking at media careers and we can help you with that and have conversation. The third step is really the most challenging of the four steps, and that's to answer the question, how am I going to find a job? How does it happen? And for that, I would recommend that you and I, uh, or you and another one of our talented staff, uh, Marilyn Kettlehut, uh, either of us would be uh, really happy to sit down with you on uh, this platform, on this uh, virtual uh, vehicle to have conversations about your job search, resources, answer questions, because what we really want you to do is have a sense of confidence going forward. And that is especially challenging, not just in a challenging job market, but in the market we're in right now with this COVID-19 complication. And the fourth step is to prepare and practice the interview process. And we have many staff uh, in Borichter that are eager to sit down with you and do practice interviews or simply just talk about how to prepare for interviews. So as we think about this big picture and what's going on, what are we gonna do? If we have that four step planning process in mind as a structure, and then based on where you are with that continuum, we have staff that can meet in this vehicle uh, through Handshake when you set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment to really personalize the approach and address questions. So, so that's, that's what we're eager to do. Uh, I think one of the common questions that people are going to ask 
would be, are people hiring? And there is a resource that I'm going to put on our chat feature when I'm done uh, speaking uh, that is a great resource uh, providing information on organizations that are freezing their hiring, are actively hiring, as well as those that are uh, laying off. And uh, it's got nice search features, and it's a great tool as you're thinking about pursuing work uh, just to do some cross-referencing and to begin identifying potential employers that are actively seeking talent potentially like yours. And so uh, the key in this process is to recognize there are opportunities. There are staff in Borkter that are eager to work with you in this process and to not get stuck in the process. Uh, with this going on, it's easy to kind of shift into neutral or reverse and uh, and not really move forward in the process, not to ask the questions, not to engage the conversation. And we're here to try to help you do that and, and provide whatever encouragement and resources in the process. So with that, what I'd like to do is pause and uh, listen to any questions that you might have sparked either by what I've shared or questions maybe that you've been wondering about. Uh, thank you very much, Jenna, for putting that resource on candor.co uh, on those organizations, on the listing of organizations that are hiring, freezing, or laying off. Um, so let's open it up. Uh, ask your questions. Whatever the question is, we're really interested. All of our staff that's on the line with you are interested in answering it. Okay, I'll go ahead and kick us off a second, just give some people some time to write in a question. Um, when you think about the job search, um, how many jobs and internships do you think students should be applying for during this time? So well, that's, that's a great question. Uh, thank you. Um, Jenna may have some great tips as she always does on internships. Uh, let me start with jobs. I think that I recommend Every senior that's looking for a work every Saturday should take 30 minutes and sit down and have set goals for their next week for their job search and how many contacts they want to make, how many networking contacts they may want to make, how many applications they want to submit, and then schedule that into their planner, electronic or print. And then once it's scheduled in, you'll do it. And so I would say each week, I would recommend trying to reach out to at least one or two networking contacts to try to set up a, point, a, a phone or Skype Zoom appointment, uh, or of course we can't forget uh, Google Hangouts. Um, so I would, I would recommend one or two networking appointments if you can. That's the most effective way to find work. 60 to 70% of the people that are looking for work do that. It is the most challenging. People sometimes are hesitant. That's why Megan does such a great job coaching in that process. I think second, for just inquiries, whether it's a targeted search process that I can talk about one-on-one -on -one with any of you individually, or if it's just through Indeed, Glassdoor, or more importantly, most importantly, handshake opportunities that you can find, I would say you'll want to try to send out five to eight applications per week. Now, if you've been doing this since November and you've been doing five to eight, uh, great. If you're just starting, uh, I would say at a minimum five to eight, uh, and again, put the focus on the networking piece. Jenna, what are your thoughts on internships? I would completely agree with the networking, ramping that up at this stage for internships would be really helpful. Usually the number ballpark we say for internships is to try to aim to apply to at least 20 opportunities, uh, in your process. But I think moving uh, into April and May, networking would be extremely important to do along with the online applications. So I know we'll be covering networking a little bit more and I didn't know if uh, Mary Ellen had any comments as well. I think Mary Ellen doesn't have any comments at this time, but I will let her chime in when she does. Um, 
So Dale, our next question is from John, um, and he is curious if there's things that he could do to distinguish himself as a potential candidate um, in a virtual setting. Great question, oh, John. Uh, nice question. Thank you, John. Um, so uh, I'm going to make some assumptions here, and John, don't be shy about correcting in the chat setting, uh, unmuting and jumping in, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, but I think uh, related to distinguishing yourself, I think the key to it in the interview process is to understand how very specific experiences and skills out of those tie directly to the role and the challenges of the position you're applying for, as well as being able to articulate a keen understanding of the organization and its values, products, and services, and how you can really meet that need. So I think I think that. Uh, being able to articulate that and practice the interview process. Uh, we have many staff that uh, do practice interviews and could really give you a sense of that. If virtually you're saying when you apply online uh, and trying to distinguish yourself in your cover letter, I think again, trying to target and tie as clearly as possible skill sets and specific experiences and tying them to very specific aspects of the responsibilities of the role is huge. And so I think uh, I'm happy to work with you uh, both on the interview practice as well as cover letter resumes. And we have other staff that are very eager to also do that if you'd like. Uh, but uh, great question. And uh, really, you've hit the nail on the head with this process. The whole part of this process is trying to differentiate yourself to show how you're distinctive as a candidate from other individuals. So great question. Thank you. I would say definitely don't use a fun Zoom background <laughs> if it's a Zoom interview. I think there's some really cool um, platforms out there that you can be on a beach when you're interviewing. Um, I would say let's avoid those types of things. But um, Mary Ellen is joining us. Mary Ellen Kettlehut also works in the Borkter Center. And Mary Ellen, any other pieces to add to Dale's comments around job searching and internships? Um, sorry, I was double muted before. Um, so I completely agree with shifting focus to networking. Um, Dale, I agree that statistic around 70 some percent of jobs are landed through networking. So you can't just apply and wait uh, anymore, especially now. Um, another way, John, that I was thinking about differentiating yourself, um, and this may be on your resume, or it may be in an interview, is to go back and get to know yourself through your strengths quest results. Mm -hmm. If you can cite that you're highly adaptable, and you, you're not the only one saying so, right? But that Gallup um, had uh, a survey that you did, and it came back with these five strengths. All of a sudden, you have more credibility, and you're leveraging that work you did to get to know yourself. Um, I've been recommending that people use those on their resumes in various ways, and also in interviews. So strengths um, hopefully will cheer you up also to kind of build that confidence. Great. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Um, any other questions that uh, we can field at this time before Dale takes over again? Feel free to drop those in the chat or on mute and ask. Okay, we will leave some extra time at the end. So Dale, if you have any more advice to share, we are all ears. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, you know, a common question that if we were together in a room and we're talking about finding work. A common question I like to throw out, and sometimes this question is good just to spark some thinking. Uh, and the question is this, and, and whatever, what are, whether you're looking for internships, full-time work, grad school planning, whatever. Uh, and the question is, as I think about this process, either finding an internship or finding work or uh, ex, uh, applying to grad school, What's the single biggest concern or question mark I have? What, what kind of nags at me? What, what is just bugging me? And uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear uh, either through chat or just 
uh, not uh, unmuting yourself and jumping in. Um, you know, love to hear some thoughts on whatever that could be. But don't all speak at once. Well, I, you know, sometimes it's just hard to come up with a question. Uh, it's, uh, we get a little flat footed or caught, uh, not sure what to say. And so I think that um, one of the things reinforcing what Mary Ellen has said and what others have shared, I think the key through this process is to have easy, quick access to friendly, positive staff like the people in Borker that really are wanting to do whatever they can to help you with your own success and to set up appointments, to set up one-on-ones, to do whatever uh, we can. You know, we don't know which seniors out there have positions, don't have positions, are looking. And so we're really dependent on you to say, hey, I need help. Um, I'm not sure about X, Y, or Z, uh, and take the initiative, set, get something set up so that we can, uh, take you from where you are and help you move along a path, uh, that will move you closer to grad school admission, internship, or work acceptance, uh, and have a, a sense of positive outlook in, uh, in really some challenging times. So, uh, I'm just going to pause again to see if any other questions have arisen in um, your minds, and if not, uh, we'll go to we'll go to the next step. This is kind of unrelated in a way, but still related. Um, some of my um, housemates or other senior friends I have like had appointments with the Borkter Center before all of this happened. Um, should they just expect an email <laughs> about? A meeting coming up or should they just assume that that will be sent to them in a Google meets calendar invitation? Um, just what that process looks like. Sure. Each, that's a great question. And the staff may want to correct me sometimes with these scheduling details. I am not necessarily uh, uh, the best resource. Uh, so, uh, um, but my understanding is that everyone that was set up before uh, the quarantine process and the stay in place process are getting an email indicating that it will be through Google Hangouts Meet. Uh, so it'll be through this type of a platform, only just one on one, and that staff members are responsible for reaching out to each of their staff. I would say, you know, Kayla, it's a great question. Uh, if your um, residents have not heard, then uh, encourage them. Um, you know, if they haven't heard probably by Thursday or Friday, encourage them to reach out to the particular person just to confirm, but they should be able to go into their calendar and see that it's scheduled in and should be set and then just click on the Hangouts link and be in good shape. I can add to that too, Kayla. Um, if there's another form of technology that a student prefers, say it's Zoom or Skype, um, FaceTime, anything like that, uh, please hear that the Borkter Center is very willing to adapt. Uh, we know that um, sometimes a phone call might even be better if your, your internet isn't um, up to, to snuff with everything that you're streaming and downloading and those types of things. So uh, we just encourage communication. Um, you can actually comment on your handshake appointment um, mm -hmm. and that note gets directed directly to that staff member. We'll write you back or send us an email. So um, what many of us have been doing is either commenting with the link or um, adding you to the Google calendar, but any and all questions, concerns like that, just direct them to careers at hope.edu and we'll be happy to get back um, as soon as we can. We get our voicemail actually to our email there too. So if you call our main line, we'll get back to you within at least one business day with questions like that too. So all appointments are virtual and we're happy to meet with you. Thank you. Well, I'm looking at the chat feature and I don't see additional questions. 
Uh, and I'm not hearing anything through those that might be jumping in like Kayla nicely just did. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna turn it back over uh, to the uh, great staff leading this process and, and uh, uh, our next step in the process. Megan? Great, thanks Dale. Um, so one shameless plug for something coming up, we are going to be doing another webinar next week. Um, so we're getting the question of what is Borkter doing in response to COVID-19? We're doing a lot. Um, first and foremost, our students, um, our customers, um, our people are the most important to us right now. And so we want to make sure that we're addressing your concerns and your needs and your next best step. Um, but we also want to uh, share the information that we've been monitoring every single day. So our um, executive director, uh, Sean Colbrin, joined by a few additional Borkter staff, will be hosting a webinar on Thursday, April 9th, um, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so community hour in Holland. You can go right back into Handshake. Um, Casey will show us where that is in the events section. But that might be another great webinar to just be informed about what industries are hiring, what industries are on hold, um, maybe some new options that you've never considered. So uh, that will be part two of our webinar series. Um, but next, I'd love to talk about networking. So one of the great tools that you have available to you that is 100% free um, is called the Hope College Connection. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen and show you that platform. So the Hope College Connection, um, you will go to connection.hope.edu. Um, if you opened your email on Tuesday morning, you should have gotten an email about this as well. But if you accidentally deleted it, as we sometimes do, um, connection.hope.edu is where you'll go. Once you're on there, you'll um, start an, an account. Um, students are not preloaded. I'm highly recommending using a non-HOPE email uh, that you're gonna use post-graduation if you are a senior. That way we can create an alumni account a little bit quicker. But if you'd like to use your HOPE email, you're totally fine to do that. First step that you're gonna do inside the HOPE College Connection is create a profile. It's very similar to many of our social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook. You can add a photo, a background photo, and then you can build your profile by either importing a copy of your LinkedIn profile, which it'll walk you through the steps if you've never done that before, or you can upload a version of your resume. So all that to say, you can make your profile in less than a minute, which is great. So where I would go from here is this make a connection tab. And this is where there's over 2,000 alumni and friends in here. So our user types in here are alumni, parents of current HOPE students, as well as friends of the college. So that makes it a little bit more unique than LinkedIn. LinkedIn will only show you HOPE alum um, or parents that have graduated from HOPE, but that makes it very, very unique. So we know that our alum are willing to help, but we have some great families that wanna surround you and support you in this networking process. So from here, I can take this matching quiz. I just love a good quiz, um, but this quiz will ask you questions around what you're most interested in. Then your results, it'll curate the best matches from you from this database. So it'll recommend three to four different connections that would be most beneficial for you to connect with. I can search by a keyword. I can search by location, which even is even better by zip code industry expertise. So there are 74 different types of industries in here and we have them broken down. So if you're here, they're thinking, sorry, I cannot talk today. If you're thinking engineering, you could click on this specific discipline. Maybe you have an interest in working in the outdoor industry space. Say you want to work at like a Patagonia, you can click multiple industries. So you might do environmental services and marketing um, or fashion. I can click by um, company or organization. And then if you click this is current button, it will show you alumni that are currently working there. The advantage to leaving this unchecked is somebody might have worked at a company that you're interested in for 10 years and transferred to a new organization. They're gonna have great advice about that other organization as well. So um, depending on what you're looking for, that'll be an option. And then the more filters. So every user has to put a help topic, 
whether it's work-life balance, networking, maybe you want some help with your resume, you can click those. Are you searching for alums with a certain major? When I click apply, what will happen is alumni will be generated in these little tiles. So I'm gonna click on Brianna here, and I'll be able to read through her profile. I can bookmark her up here in the right-hand side if I wanna come back to her information later, read more about what she's doing with her master's in chemistry, and then I can click the Let's Connect button. When I do that, it opens up a screen that gives me her bio again, but also has a place that I can write her a message. Many times I hear from students, oh my gosh, what do I even say? How do I reach out? I wanna sound professional. Hope Couch Connection makes it super simple. I can click on, I'm looking to explore my career. I really wanna network, or maybe I was an alum and I wanted to reconnect, I can do that. By clicking on these templates, it'll put it right here in the bottom part of your screen, and you can go ahead and edit that information as well. Um, so they're great templates to start with. But heading back into the database, another thing that I can do is search by a map. So if you're not from West Michigan or you're looking in a different part of the country, I love this map feature. I can zoom in on a certain part of the country. I'm going to zoom in on New York here. And these little hotspots show me where concentrations of alumni are. And when I click on them, it shows me who those alumni are, and I can click on their name to go to their profile. If I had a filter in here, you can use the map feature and it'll filter down to those people. One thing I always like to share with students is let the system work for you. So if you put a bunch of filters in here, you can actually go over to this set search alerts and you can set it so anytime an alumni that meets that criteria joins the database, it will email you, or if you have it set up in the system, it will text you. So you don't have to be stalking this every day, but I do recommend getting in here a couple times a week, but let the system work for you. Um, we want to encourage you in this platform to reach out to alumni, ask for advice, seek out mentors. Um, people wouldn't have joined this database if they didn't wanna be helpful to you. Um, so that's a great resource. If you're an underclassman and um, want to do some job shadowing, our Discover Work program is in here as well. Um, so this is a formal job shadowing program, short-term, unpaid. Um, these will be opening this fall. So if you're interested in this program, go ahead and read more about it um, and click join program as well. So with that, I know that was a very quick overview. I would definitely encourage you to schedule a networking appointment. Uh, Casey will be showcasing what that looks like and how to do that. But if you have any networking questions or, hey, I, which industry should I target? I'm, I'm socially awkward. I'm an introvert. Um, how do I navigate networking? How do I navigate networking virtually? It's a little bit different. Um, so I'd be happy to answer those questions and more in a networking appointment. I haven't forgot about LinkedIn. We still do LinkedIn appointments. Um, I love to review profiles. So if you ever need that as a resource, um, please know that it's also a handshake appointment type. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause. Are there any specific questions um, that you have about the platform or Mary Ellen, feel free to chime in too um, around the Hope College connection. So I would definitely encourage you if you haven't um, started a profile, please get in there. Um, the student approval process, Megan, I see your question. Um, it just takes about one business day. Um, if we get an influx, it could take two days, um, but we're checking it regularly. If for some reason you're not able to get in there right away, please let us know. We will get in there as soon as we can and improve it. Um, our process on our end, we just tie your student ID number to your profile. So when you become an alum, we transfer all that information over so you still have access post-graduation um, to be connecting with fellow HOPE alums. So typically one business day, if we get an influx, could be a little bit longer, but we're, we're doing our best to turn those around within the hour. Great question, Megan. Megan, the only other thing that I would offer is that um, it looks like most people right now are sending a connect 
message uh, to an alum and then um, setting up a phone call, right? So it's not like this is gonna be um, just back and forth text talk. Um, many, many of the alumni have offered our students time um, sort of live on the phone or on the screen now. So um, just know that it gets real personal real fast because these alumni um, are really eager to help. I, I would echo that. Um, so many alumni have not had the um, virtual component at their fingertips for a very long time. So when we launched this, we had over a thousand within three weeks. So if that says anything, they are excited. They want to hear from you. And I just, I love the Hope community because it's a place where people just want to surround you with support and they truly want to help. So please reach out and ask those questions. The platform does have a Skype feature built into it. So if that is something that you like and want to set up an, a meeting virtually with an alum first before you kind of go offline, know that the system also has that capability. So with that, um, I'm going to pass it over to Casey Petro, who works in um, employer relations in our office, who's going to walk us through some handshake tips. All right. Thank you, Megan. I'm going to share my screen really quick. All right. Does everybody see that? Okay. So I'm just going to go through seven quick handshake tips. I looked at a lot of your profiles and it looks like a lot of you are in handshake and you're active in handshake. So for some of you, this might be some reminders, but also some good things to think about as you are doing your job and internship search. So the first tip is to tailor your profile. So go through your profile, make sure that all of your experiences are up to date, that you've got your resume uploaded, um, you've filled out those career interests. Um, just go over it, make sure everything's up to date and current as you're looking for your next opportunity. So tip two is how to upload your resume. I saw that a lot of you have your resumes uploaded. Um, please make sure that your resumes are up to date. Sometimes we see that a resume is uploaded sophomore year and we kind of forget about it. Um, just make sure you've uploaded your most current resume and here are the instructions to do so. I've also linked to the Handshake how-to guide. I'll be emailing these slides out to everybody after this so you'll be able to go directly to those step-by-step -step guides. So tip three, and probably the most important tip for your job or internship search, is using the Handshake filters. So these up here, when you go to the job search section of Handshake, will be your Handshake filter. So you can filter by your type of job, full-time, part-time, internship, volunteer, or other. You can, also do, you can also search by region, industry, major, employer. There's a lot of filters that you can apply. Um, so once you've applied those filters, Thing I want to make sure that you do is to create alerts. So alerts will give you email and if you have the Handshake app downloaded, you'll get push notifications whenever um, a job is posted that meets your criteria here. So once you've set your criteria and you do your search, which is right here in the arrow, once you put some filters on there, this box will pop up. Once you save that search, you'll get alerts to that. So just make sure you take note of that. And as you're doing your, um, your searches, save those so then you don't have to go back and do them again. All right. So tip four, make your profile public. If you're going to do all the work of creating your profile and uploading your resume, make sure you make it public. If it is not public, employers can't see you. So you'll want to make it public so employers who are searching for candidates, just like you're searching for jobs, and come across your profile, check you out, see what your resume looks like, and then they may reach out to you. So I've also linked right here your profile privacy options in Handshake, so you can read a little bit more about that, and we'll tell you what making that profile public um, really means. Um, so check that out, make your profile public if you're comfortable with that, um, and then you might find employers are reaching out to you. So tip five, if you're having trouble finding a job, use tip five. This is scheduling an appointment through Handshake. So both Dale and Megan mentioned this. You can go into Handshake to schedule an appointment. All you have to do is log in, click on the Career Center and select appointments. 
It'll ask you what grade you're in, and then it will navigate you to appointments appropriate for your grade. You can set up a LinkedIn or networking appointment with Megan, grad school, um, job search, mock interview with Dale, resumes and networking with Mary Ellen, among a lot of other appointments with a lot of other staff members. So check that out. If you're unsure of what appointment to sign up for, please email us or reach out to us and we'll help point you in the right direction. Um, there are a lot of options and we'll, we'll get you to the right place. All right, so tip six, which you did if you're here for this event, you registered for it on Handshake. Um, keep checking back there. It's located right up here in that top bar, the events, and then also in this tile right down here. So if you click there, it'll take you to all of the events that Hope College is hosting um, from Borichter, but also some virtual events from employers in other schools that all students are invited to. Our next event on April 9 that Megan talked about, the career, next Career Conversations event, will be in there. So if you're interested, please go click on the events link and register for that event. Um, and our last tip is to be active. Being active is the best way to get the job or opportunity you want. And if you feel stuck, please reach out to us. You can email us, you can tweet at us, you can Facebook us, you can email anyone in our office. Please reach out and we're happy to help. Um, some things that you can do to remain active is register for events like this. You can join the Hope College Connection and interact with employers on Handshake. Continue to apply for those jobs and internships and schedule an appointment with us. We're happy to help point you in the right direction. Um, so with those, that being said, um, if you have any questions about Handshake or in general for any one of us, we are going to stay on the call. So um, please feel free to put a chat in the chat box or unmute yourself and ask a question. Thanks, Megan, for the, the comment on the slideshow. Um, please know that everyone that has joined this call today, we will send you some follow-up um, via Handshake uh, to make sure that you have the resources that you need. Um, Dale and Jenna both linked some great resources in our chat. We will also make sure that you get those um, as well as this recording if you would like. I know we threw a lot of information at you. Um, so once we have that downloaded, we'll get that out to you as well. Um, but to echo what Casey said, any other questions that are on your mind, they can be very personal to you. That's great. Um, so many people probably can learn something from a question that you have as well. Sometimes in this virtual platform, we don't want to ask a question. That is totally fine. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to use the resources that Casey laid out to schedule an appointment. Um, we see you. We hear you. You are a name to us in the Borichter Center. So please know that we want to help you every step of the way. Any concern, um, we've probably seen it, done it, <laughs> um, or addressed it in the past. So COVID-19 um, is impacting us, but this doesn't change how we serve you. So. Um, please get connected with us, send us any questions, and we really appreciate your time being on our webinar today. So hopefully we'll see many of you our next time, um, or we will see you in an appointment. So thank you so much for being here. Um, we'll wait around for another five minutes in case you have a question you want to ask us one-on-one. -on -one. Other than that, you are free to log off. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks, Kayla. <laughs> Kayla good to see you. Yep. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you, too. I am going so to go just the three of us. I'm going to stop recording. Four of us.